Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs and we're out here on the back nine. There ain't nothing back there. It's all over there. The back nine of Eagle Glen Golf Club here in Corona, California. Fantastic course through the canyons and the hills. You can lose some golf balls in a hurry out here. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you click the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week. We'll see you out there on the 10th hole. A par three down the hill, 200 yards. Let's see what we got. Now it's always unique when a course starts or finishes the front or back nine with a par three, but that's what fit the land here at Eagle Glen. And the 10th hole here is located right next to the first green. So you don't quite cycle back all the way to the clubhouse. A 200 yard downhill par three. It's a narrow green as it sits to the tee box. And there's some deep bunkers on the left hand side that you definitely want to avoid. I was airing off to the right, hoping to get a little bounce down off the hill and onto the green, but it hung up. A little chip out here with the sand wedge, leaving myself a four footer underneath the hole to save my par and to stay at even par after that beautiful front nine. Now the 11th hole is an awesome par four, hanging off the edge of the cliff here. All the tee boxes are located up on the side of the hill and you play down over the stone wall to the fairway on the left of the hill here. You're gonna have to snake it between the hill and those bunkers with your tee shot as the fairway sits down below the level of the green, so you're gonna have a blind approach up to this green. Now, if you have a long enough tee shot, you can sometimes clear the hill, and I had a little wind behind me helping me out, so I decided to take it right at the green and send it over the hill. So there's a big tree that plays on the left side of the green, and you can see that tree just over the crest of the hill from the tee box. So if you aim to the right of it, you can find this little finger of fairway as long as you got 285 yards of fly on your driver. A terrible approach shot from 50 yards. I actually left it short of the hole and didn't even get it on the green. Nearly chipped it in for birdie though, lipped it out there and just another comfy tap in par to leave ourselves here at even par and going into the longest hole on the entire golf course, 645 yards of a par five with a very tight landing area here off the drive. You can lose your ball down in those trees on the left hand side, and it's not a comfortable place to be down the right either. Now coming down the fairway a little longer, you're gonna see this bunker here really defines the second half of the hole as it wraps around the bunker and you're gonna to need to decide if you're gonna to wanna to fly it over with your layup or set off to the left-hand side. Now that bunker sits about 200 yards from the green, so you're still gonna have plenty left with your third shot into this well-protected green, more deep bunkers protecting both sides of this undulating green. Now this was a big turnover draw and it hit the fairway running hard. I drove down there with the cart and got lucky to find this thing just hanging up in the rough here. I didn't have much of a stance and couldn't quite get a full club on it like a three wood or nothing. So just a long iron four and just trying to punch it down there effectively right over that cross bunker that you saw on the flyover. And I left myself a perfect 100 yards here, which is a knockdown gap wedge for me. I really, really like that number. Hitting that 80% gap wedge goes such a good distance. Controlled number for me here. Eight feet for birdie. Let's roll it in. Here we go again with the birdie putts just rolling on by and the comfy tap in pars rolling on in. Now here, the shortest par four on the back nine is gonna be playing as the easiest one. Now those three bunkers you see on the left there should be avoidable off the tee. You should be able to get your drive over that, but then you've got a cluster of bunkers on the right protecting the green. So if you're gonna to wanna to go for this thing, you're gonna to need to air off to the left-hand side. There's plenty of room to miss over there. 
Now, this shot was pretty good, heading over the bunkers and directly at the front of the green. Just landed it short here on the fairway and had a little pitch over a severe ridge that played in the green. This pin was in the back right, and it was almost playing in a little depression down there. You really had to get your distance right here, and I just got it to trickle over the edge and fall down. And this was another eight-foot birdie putt here. And needless to say, after missing one on the right and then the next one on the left, my putting confidence was about as low as it could possibly get. But luckily, I was hitting the long club quite well, so let's try to hold my round together here and see if we can still make something of it. One of the more difficult par fours here, the 14th, is heading back up the hill, so the 440 number is playing even a little bit longer. Now, avoid the, those bunkers down the right and the severe mounds on the left side of the fairway, and then you'll have a clear shot into this green, which is a little funky coming into it as the front of the green is severely raised. There's a big false front there, so it almost plays blind as you're coming into the green since there's such a severe slope. Now I tried to rear back and give this one a little bit more heading up the hill, but I reared back too much and caught this ball right on the bottom of the club face, hit it really thin, but as you know, they say thin to win, so it was right down the middle here, and I had just a nine iron into the front of the green. Thought I had enough, but I pushed it out to the right, found myself a fluffy lie here in the rough and hit a terrible chip shot down this slope and had a severely breaking putt here from 15 feet just to salvage my par. But it's just like the rest of the putts. I'm just leaving them right on the edge, and that's a comfy tap-in bogey. Not what we like to see. This 15th hole is awesome. Drive back to the Black Tees if you get a chance. It's a spectacular view back into the canyon, and especially down the shoot of trees towards this wide open fairway. 475 yards it is playing back down the hill and generally down breeze as well so it's not going to play nearly as long as the yardage suggests now as we come into the green this is the best green on the entire course it's a beer it's green but generally the beer it's has a severe dip in the front of the green this one's right in the middle so the front of the green is flat, dips down to the valley in the middle, and then back up to the back of the green. And today we're facing that flag right down in the trough. Man, luckily this driver has really been working for me this summer, especially today. I was able to hit another one right down Main Street, just a little off to the left-hand side. But there was no rough to deal with over here, just a really tight dirt lie and an 8-iron coming into this 160-yard shot as the wind was in my face a little. And it's another block off to the right, just like the previous hole. And this is almost going to be a carbon copy. Not a great chip shot. 8 feet for par here. Oh boy, 8 feet. I said it's a carbon copy. That's 15 feet for par. But sure enough. I just leave it there on the edge for another bogey. Now, one of the coolest tee shots here on the course is the 16th tee, as you got to hit it up and over this riverbed to the fairway, and the fairway is way up on the hill, about 15 to 20 feet above the tee box. You can't see a thing up there, except for the top ridges of the bunkers off in the distance. Those are your targets to see. You gotta fish your drive down there. This is the number two handicap for a reason. It is a tight, tight landing area down there and a pretty severe green with a big slope running right through the middle of it. This back left hole location is gonna be sitting right on top of that shelf. Now, like I said previous, the driver is the most confident club in my bag, so I just went with it, turned over the draw, and sent it down the middle, just a little off to the right here in the rough, but I was able to get a wedge on it from 110, and that little feathered gap wedge again really worked out for me. 
I was able to get it to land here pin high. Oh boy, but it's another 10 footer, but this time it's for birdie. Let's get one back. Yes. And finally we're able to get one to drop back to one over par and on to the last par three of the day. Just a little wedge down the hill in this little tiny canyon sitting right behind the 16th hole. This par three 17th is just a teeny tiny little par three. 145 yards adjusted for about 135 down the hill. This is just a pitching wedge for me to the front green and almost got this thing to land right next to the hole. Just a little left and another missed short putt that killed me. I really wanted to be sitting at even par heading into the par five finisher, but it is what it is. It's just some golf. We got to go on anyway. This awesome finishing hole 18th split fairway par five heading right back to the clubhouse stay on the left of the water here off the tee there's no bunkers to worry about you can just air it out down the left hand side here and as you're coming into the green you're definitely going to have to fly it back over the water and avoid the bunkers coming into the green now the bunkers definitely aren't the only thing you have to avoid with the water snaking back around to the left hand side here the layup area, though, is plenty wide where you can get something over just over the tip of the bridge there. If you're going to be going for this green in two, it's going to take two perfect golf shots. But sitting at 540 from the black tees, it is very much reachable. Just another driver right down the middle of the fairway here on the last hole. I was really gunning for that birdie. I wanted to shoot even par for the round. And here, a five iron from 215. This should be a perfect number, but I just overcooked it. Man, I was excited to hit this shot. And I overcooked it into the green just over the back edge here. And I had to chip it up and hopefully get up and down. It was kind of my nemesis the entire day. And so I had one more chance to get up and down for birdie and finish even par. But... <laughs> It was another one, another missed putt, a comfy tap in par, and one over par for the day. Well, 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 not quite the finish we wanted, but it is what it is. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you back here again soon. Later.